Take off your hosers.
that could speak in tongues and revelations to every tortured creature who feels they've died a thousand deaths trapped inside this endless limbo, drawn and quartered in the darkness. Dirty puppets of the pain gods. Dirty puppets of the pain gods. Where the devil, where the devil, where the devil is a woman, where the devil is a drug, where the devil is a fiend, where the devil is the endless need to feed is the loneliness that never ends. Like the bomb inside your head that will never stop ticking. So you pick up the knife, or I pick up the gun, or you play with the noodle, and you consider the needle, and then you put the noose around your neck, and you smash an empty bottle at the foot of the bed, which you wield like a shovel when you pick up that pen, hoping to crawl out of that ditch you spent your whole life digging. All my songs are literary. You said I saved your life. Funny, we were both ready to kill ourselves. You, we just couldn't, we talked about it, but we couldn't decide on the perfect murder. You kept talking about jumping out the window, some kind of homage to Polanski's tenant, but you were only on the second story. So you wouldn't have hit hard enough, it would have ended badly. I keep dreaming, I keep dreaming, I keep dreaming about a place in the woods, some place where they'll never find my body, they'll never find my body. I'm holding out for perfect light, golden amber on the fallen night, hunter's moon at a quarter to midnight, dead leaves cackling under heavy boots, the smell of wet leather, I said, you saved my life. But I wanted you to commit the perfect murder, a ritual sacrifice that would take us both out. And then you said it again, say it again, say it again, say it again. Say it again. I only saved your life. So I have more of you for myself. Crazy. Crazy.
corrosive bloodline. It bruises the bones from the inside out, violating everything that I am, the flesh of its host carrier, electrospasms of agitation, spinning shock waves which ripple under the skin, irritating from the outside in, irritating from the inside out. This is where a part of me always lives, the blood The maniac, the psychotic, the schizophrenic, suffering from episodic mood swings on, screaming myself. I scream at myself to just stop. To just stop. To learn to find a way to make every goddamn day not so fucking murderous. Hyperactive limbo, electro rigor mortis, one foot in front of the other. A thousand and one more Sisyphean feats, the slow leaking of light. Night creeps in and I start to lose it. What I try to hide from in the shadows cast by the sun develop a petulant luminescence as the dark sets in a strange hollow forms in the pit of my gut like something has been ripped away. Something has been ripped away. The fuck am I doing? Trying to divide the night from this horrendous now. This crushing bruise, this empty hollow, the slow peeling soul murder of my own life forces it repels against itself. This is how I feel when desire is denied. When I do not keep my hunger in check. When it is ignored when I pretend it does not exist, when I attempt to placate it with false fuels, minor distractions, inaction, stasis. When the part of me that is frozen, many parts of me have been frozen, are kicked in the teeth by a brute force born of fire and fury and starts to bray because a rebellion staged by one is not a fucking revolution. A rebellion staged by one it's not a revolution, it's simple fucking madness. mistress of a lunatic who's been called in for questioning and has been on the land for decades, grilled about my participation in the perpetration of heinous crimes to numerous to mention. I mean, this is the only way I feel every goddamn day of my life. Fucking how the hell the hell am I asked it every day? How the hell am I supposed to remember what happened 40 fucking years ago? I can't remember what happened 40 minutes ago. It's like trudging through a vast overgrowth somewhere deep in the backwoods and trudging through the dirt of an unmarked grave looking for clues to the evil that befell a mutilated corpse that was left rotting in the rain. And of course, I mean, the details get a little sketchy and I attempt to stitch together a timeline based on random samples of circumstantial evidence, hearsay, and cold, hard facts, but the crust 
dusty wound in my memory bank is like a grungy gorge almost too wide to circumvent. So like any good psychic detective sworn to tell the truth, that which I cannot recall I will simply omit, which in the end will only end up favoring my defense. And here we are. And sometimes the less said about the details, the better, because quite frankly, what I can't recall is best left buried where the mysterious relics of lost remembrances form a toxic stew which one day may erupt, but for now, I mean for right now, I mean for like one more minute, I'm keeping my fucking mouth shut. And all you need to know is that the evidence presented before you tonight is truly indeed, and I do mean it, fucking murderous. Some days I wake up and I just want to be the laziest bitch in the whorehouse. You know, head cocked to one side, lucky strike dangling from my cock stained scarlet lips. Eyes on the alarm clock whose somnambulant throb reminds me with each passing pulsation about that century-long samba that will be my funeral procession. I'm just dreaming about the hundreds of dead soldiers who had come and soiled my battlefield and the way they would bang into me like bullets fired at point-blank range, the hot molten lead mingling with the blood and call my eyes would be heavy with morphine, cocaine, MDMA, or madness. Mine swill drunk on the uncountable contaminants I have feasted on for decades as some kind of prophylactic against my own sickness. Some days, some days, some nights, some nights are meant to be wasted, right? I mean, some decades are meant to be wasted, right? I mean, I saw the best minds of my generation scoring dime bags of dope on Avenue D, passing out and puking, waking up and passing out and puking. Their genius, inseparable from their disease, and they always said the same thing. I always said, some days, some nights, some days, <coughs> some nights. Some decades are meant to be wasted, right? 
I haven't wasted a second of my fucking life. like a dirty white honeysuckle. He said, he said, I was like the night. I was like the night. I was always running off like the night. Yeah. Dawn, slowly, blisters, shredding a crack, a dirty brown in the horizon, the sickly green gray pus of another nuclear day transmits life, death, raised to my brain, which accelerates my faded pulse and shoots through my bloodstream like a dirty volt of static electricity, which bounces off the ceiling, making everything look hollow. Life-size ghosted images of what real once was. I'm no longer sure I know what real is. I jolt upright like a reanimated autopsy whose motor functions fail and after hours of neglect suddenly register shockwaves. I'm sleeping with his memory. I'm sleeping with his memory. If I roll my eyes far enough back in my head, letting just the sliver of white like a crack crescent moon kiss the morning somewhere under my veiny bloodshot eyes, I will zero in on him and like a cheap five and dime storefront gypsy fortune teller, I will read his last thought and it will scare the living shit out of me. until you live there. He was like a sick shark, isolated in a prison of pain. His loneliness tasted of sand and sewer drains of tail beer and broken promises of black eyes and broken ribs of bloody rags wrapped around his temple. He said he was just soaking up the fallout of the body as battlefield. He said the body is just a battlefield. The body is just an experimental canvas. The body is just a blood bank. The body is just a punching bag, a carving board, a sack, a pus and cob. He said the body 
was meant to be trampled under by his own big black boots. Stormtroopers kicking the shit out of the enemy within, waging a counter-offensive, which would guarantee mutually assured destruction, not only against him, not only against me, but aimed directly at that shell-shocked and battle-fatigued little boy who screamed for ceasefire in the bunker and wanted his mommy to kamikaze into the demilitarized zone, that uncharted territory where a part of him still lives, that part that cowers in the far corners late at night, scared of shadows and holy ghosts. Now I want him to fucking love him! from the wall, the ones you came and didn't stay, the ones from whom I ran away, the ones that overstayed their use, the ones you begged for my abuse, the ones you battered one and all, the ones I pushed to watch them fall, the ones that didn't stand a chance. Because from the start, I knew the cause and their distress is what I sought to love, to love, to fuck, to fight, to watch the days turn back to night. And now the nights are mine alone, and daylight breaks, and bruises form. The empty space upon my bed will not be empty for too long. Another man will come and go. And still more bruises bathed in blood. A simple promise to pay for love.
How did it get so late? So soon. Tomorrow is just a word for a place we're all looking for. Time is just one long second that goes on forever. Time, he's waiting in the wings. He speaks of senseless things. His trick is you and me. The present is the point at which time touches eternity. It is not an extension of time. It is an absence of time, an abandonment of the calendar, the embrace of a strange mathematical point of endlessness, a point with no width occupying no space. Time is the longest distance between you and me. Time is waking up the trying to divine the absence of the unnecessary. I'm attempting to unblock the limitations of the failure of resilience. I'm flailing to find new ways to overcome the tedium of the human form with all its multiple imperfections. Of course, every imperfection of mine is merely a new fucking delicacy. trying to read braille off your skin to decode your past and future tense. I look at my watch and it says, oh God, it's 9.25 and I'm still fucking alive. The moment right before and immediately after things become unbearable. The moment right before and immediately after something becomes unbearable, that's where I fucking live. I tend to disagree. You, yeah. oh, I just scream with boredom. Time folds you in its arms and gives you one last kiss, and then it flattens you out and folds you up, and tucks you away until it's time for you to become the past or the future or somebody else's sickly sweet future fantasy, which becomes a flight into a dimension that lies beyond the reach of a calendar, a place where you can kill time without injuring eternity. And then time falls in upon itself and takes you with it. Memory, when drained of the emotional charge, is simply wisdom turned outward. I, the clock is ticking. I feel the fucking hours drain away. I feel the years pass by, the decades are gone, the past is everything you fucking failed to be. I'm gonna repeat that. The past is everything you failed to be. The future is a vague possibility of what you could potentially make of it or yourself. Now, can you take it? Can I fucking take it? Can I make it through one more endless fucking night? Should I even bother and really? I mean, <laughs> All there ever really is, is the ever-present now. Time is one long second that goes on for fucking ever and being with you. And not being with you is the only way I have to measure time. So how the fuck did it get so late so soon? And does it really fucking matter? And what the fuck ever, because I'm always the last man fucking standing.
where words and music flow like the blood of a matador gored by the most beautiful bull that the world has never taken the opportunity to fucking witness. <laughs> what I want is uninterrupted hedonistic bliss before the final kiss, which will probably come too fucking quicker in my case, not quick or fuck enough. What I want and often get because I'm greedy that way, is pure intoxication. As I lose my mind, so I don't have to think about the insanity of men who would rather murder somebody than watch me fuck somebody else. What I want... What I want is for you to be free of all your fucking bullshit of all your agony and self-doubt, your fear and loathing. I want you to really be just like me, laughing in the face of fucking assholes who have no fucking idea what it is to be truly alive. And of all of this, <coughs> and if all of this is just too damn much, then please do not allow me to continue torturing myself for one more second longer. Because really, I cannot stand one more second of your fucking pain or one more second of my own pain. I have abdicated the throne of agony. Yes, I have. Because the pleasure I take, the pleasure I take in the exquisite nature of my very essence is just not to be fucking denied. And if you try to rip it away from me, you will know what murderous really fucking feels like. So the dead and dying, 
through the dead and dying, through the war torn and battle fatigued, through the widows, through the widows and orphans of warriors, through the warriors. It's for the warriors who were willing to die for their beliefs because they felt it was better to die fighting for freedom than to lead a life enslaved by lies. It's for those who believe. It's for those who believe in you better believe in ghosts. You better believe in ghosts because soon enough, you too will become a ghost. It's for the ghosts. Of Fallujah, Anbar Province, Abu Ghraib, Makuba, Guantanamo, Gaza, Beirut, Baghdad, Kabul, Kandahar, Jalalabad, Islamabad, Kathmandu, Mogadishu, Sierra Leone. It's for the freedom fighters. It's for the freedom fighters. It's for the insurgents, the rebels, the rebel rousers. This is for any individual who fights against tyranny and oppression. This is for the martyrs. It's for the martyrs. It's for Mohammed Mossadegh, Salvador Allende, Oscar Romero, Teo Van Gogh, Federico Garcia Lorca, Bruno Schultz, Pasolini, Madeline Murillo here. This is for the wounded. It's for the wounded and traumatized. This is for the survivors. This is for those suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, which I feel like I am suffering from every day of my goddamn life. This is for those who choose to survive and strive to overcome the roadblocks and landmines, the pitfalls and setbacks, the negativity of a world which forces you to fight tooth and nail, forces you into battle mode, and I'm in battle mode on a daily fucking basis, trust me on that, so I can maintain a tenuous grip of my own fucking sanity after a lifetime of the enemy's torture, humiliation, brainwashing, and abuse. It's for ghosts. This is for the ghosts. It's for the ghosts of Brooklyn, the Bronx, Detroit, Watts, Inglewood, Oakland, St. Louis, New Orleans, Memphis, Trenton, Youngstown, Cleveland, Camden, Baltimore, Newark, Little Rock, Tulsa, Baton Rouge. This is for the ghosts who felt like they were born invisible in life, born into a war zone of poverty or desperation or neglect, or if you're like me, born in a country which glamorizes violence, worships serial killers, threatens by a massacre, and then arrogantly brags about gang banging the whole fucking planet. This is for the ghosts. This is for the lovers. It's for the lovers. To the lovers of forgetfulness. Oh, I wish I could fucking forget. Oh, I wish I could fucking forget. I wish I could forget about everybody else fighting for somebody else's battles in my fucking war. Mostly survivors. Yeah. Survivors. Yeah. Trust me, my ghost will be as loud in death. Trust me, my ghost will be as loud in death as it has been in life. <laughs>
say to somebody who only has 30 days to live? What do you say to somebody that only has 30 days to live? I don't know, what could you say? You could say that in this land of illusion, we are all just transitional creatures. We're just peeping toms at the keyhole of all eternity, that the past is just the present cloaked by invisibility, and that the future is just a murmur of a memory that we will never, ever possess. I mean, the great mystery is not that we were thrown down here at a random between the profusion of matter and that of the stars, but that from our fleshy prison, we have created images powerful enough to deny our nothingness. I mean, I don't know about you, but I forced my words into the mouth of the universe, a giant black hole turned inside out. I filled it with tales full of sound and fury, madness and lust, but what the fuck does it signify? I mean, what? We inhabit an insignificant planet orbiting a minor star. We're lost in a galaxy tucked away in a forgotten corner of an unfathomable expanse. We come spinning out of nothingness, scattering stars, hoping that one day, one day over the distant horizon, there lies an incredible heightness of being, of being without being, where everything just falls away, where everything just falls away dissolves into subatomic particles where sight and sound are replaced with a comprehension of matter beyond human understanding. We're just dust and shadow. We're just dust. Death is just a shadow. Death is just the shadow that follows the body. What do you say to somebody that only has 30 hours? What do you say to somebody that only has 30 hours to look and you say, you say, I won't, I won't forget you. I won't forget you. I won't forget you. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't, I won't forget. Do you remember? Yeah. Can you remember how much beauty we possessed? I mean, it almost fucking destroyed us, right? We wanted it all, right? We wanted it all, and we went for it, baby. That's right, it didn't matter. We went for it. We knew what the score was. In the end, we fought. I mean, we fought, yeah, I mean, we fought with every fiber in our soul. We battled the battles. We, the battles raged. There wasn't a fucking day that we weren't in battle zone, but we knew who the enemy was. I mean, you gotta know who the enemy is. I mean, in the end, the enemy is always gonna fucking win. In the end, the enemy is always just death. It's fucking self. It's always been one long death trip. It's always been one long death trip in the end that we're fighting against. In the end, it's a battle to the bitter end against the killing machine and the merchants of death. You've got to fight for your life. You've got to fight to control your death. It's a fight. You've got to fight against the spiritually bereft and their soul-killing bullshit because it's in the fucking air. I mean, they poisoned everything. They poisoned everything. They poisoned the air, the water, the food. They fucking poisoned Yeah. They poisoned you. They poisoned us. What do you say? What can you say to somebody that only has 30 seconds to live? You say, you win. Yeah, you win. You will be king. For yours is the power and the glory of this is your story. You'll be wearing a crown of invisibility and nothing can stop you now you're free. Yeah, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. And your whole fucking life now you can just ride off into the sunset, both barrels blazing, laughing like a lunatic, leaving everyone and everything behind in the dust. We're just dust and shadows. Death is just the shadow that follows 
The body, don't be afraid. I mean, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore, right? I mean, you're free, right? I'm right here. Take my hand. Take my hand. I won't forget you. I won't forget. You're not going away. You're not going to dissolve. You're going to transform. You're going to explode. You're going to be like a dark night riding right into the endless night. If you're afraid of the fucking night, go into the light. Go into the light. Just go into the light. You got to let go. You just got to let go. I'm right here. Don't fight it anymore. There's nothing left to fight. You win. You win. You will be king for yours is the power of the glory. And this is your story. And you'll be wearing a crown of invisibility. And I won't forget you. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. bought a book or a CD that you applaud because I realize you love me like I love you. <laughs> <laughs>